K-I-L-R Taylor Games Hello and welcome gamers, simmers, and pilots. I am the Killer Gamer, and welcome to the World Tour, where it's not matter how fast we go, just the adventure is all that matters. And we happen to be here at DuPage Airport uh, in West Chicago, near St. Uh, Charles. Yeah, I want to say Charles, not Charleston, but... Uh, uh, and as you can see, there's the uh, airport right there in front of us. It's not exactly uh, accurate uh, from <laughs> from what you could see uh, from the uh, from the uh, beginning little slideshow there of uh, of uh, airport images. But uh, yeah, so we are here. And we're going to go ahead and make our way in here. There should be trees here, but there's not. So. And we're going very, very fast, so you know how it is. All right, well, this looks like a front door. All right, so here we are. Uh, doesn't seem to be a whole lot of traffic. It's weird because I've got uh, world traffic installed and I have it set up to the max. Maybe I'm missing something. I don't know. There's our plane. There's a plane in the background. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the plugins and let's find out here. We've got World Traffic Radar. Let's see what this says here. Uh, well, I guess it helps if we type it in. KDPA. Well, there are definitely flights out there. So there may not be, like, a lot here, but they are out here. I guess the question is, where are they going? Now, see, we can go in here and we can click on track camera, and we can see it's an American Eagle. So he's flying past it. What about this guy? He 
U.S. Airways. United. Looks like he's setting up to land at one of the airports. I'm not sure which one. These typically say where they're going. I know there's like, there's a whole thing. Oh, wait a minute. It's right here. It's right down here. My head's covering it. K C L T K O R D. KCLT. I'm not sure what that is offhand. But here's 20 miles out. Look where all the traffic is going. I bet that is uh, that's that's O'Hare. That's got to be O'Hare Airport. Pretty much everyone's avoiding the airport that I'm at apparently. 40 nautical miles out. So, well, World Traffic 3 is generating traffic. That part cannot be uh, disputed. It definitely is. I mean, you can click on any one of these, click track camera, and it will take you to that plane. So if you, if you just want, if you're just putting blips on there, you know, you can definitely test this out and find out for a fact, oh yeah, they're, they're definitely going. Now you may have not noticed this or not, but whenever you click on uh, track camera for these AI fellas, it does not pull up the autogen. Do you see that? See, so down there, that's just the ortho, that, the ortho show, the ortho photos is all that is. And no, that's like the, what, the 16 quality version because I don't have the hard drive space at the moment to do 17. Um, once I start getting my new computer built, I'm going to be getting some Buco hard drive space. And uh, I'm going to be doing some serious orthophotoing on that one. Some high quality stuff. So it'll take time. But uh, the it should look awesome. And when I get to that point, I can't wait to share that with you folks. But anyway, this is what we have for now. Uh, what else? Let's, let's let's click on this guy over here. Well, that don't look good. <laughs> this must be an area that I don't have covered. <laughs> because it's a whole bunch of nothing. <laughs> All right, well, let's not go to him. <laughs> He's over the uh, Bermuda Triangle. It moved. Let's move him. He's out in the... Uh, I'm not sure. Alright, then we got ourselves a Cessna here. I have yet to see any military aircraft. I know there's an option, but I have yet to see it. I have yet to, I have yet to come across any military aircraft. I'll click on this one here. Yeah, just another another Cessna. Need some needs more needs more variety more variety of planes I have that installed by the way needs more variety of uh, general aviation that's what it needs all right so ah I don't have ortho photos covering this area that's default texture right there I can tell. 
I'm not sure where he's he's over. That's weird, because I thought I had the orthophotos all covering this whole area. Huh. Alright, and then there's 80 nautical miles, so you can see and we're way out here. Let's check this guy out. Oh no, see, now I got... That's definitely orthophoto there. Oh, but look at this. You see it? Right there. There's default. <laughs> so I, I, didn't, I didn't capture this spot. Wherever this is... I, it's probably Ohio because I didn't get all of Ohio just yet. <laughs> what about some of these guys that are coming in real close? No. I hate that there are trees that are coming up right above where there should be like business buildings. That really annoys me. United. So we got a lot of jet airliners. United. Lots of United. Isn't there like Delta or anything here? I have no idea. <coughs> uh, anyway. How do we get out of this? I have no idea. How do I get out of this? <laughs> I don't want to be in here. Okay. So anyway, that's uh, World Traffic 3. Just kind of showing you a few things on there. I know this is more about a flight and not really World Traffic 3. But hey, you know, I mean, these flights are just kind of like a little bit of everything. So we're doing a little bit of flying. We're doing a little bit of reviewing. Um, just kind of going over a few things, you know, just kind of all-inclusive type of thing. So, and then, you know, if you've got questions, then on future videos, I'll go over your, uh, comments and questions and we can go over some stuff. So, you know, these are, these are very different type of videos. You probably realize that by now. It's like... I don't know, man. There, killer gamer, your 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 videos are pretty weird. Videos, <laughs> they're weird. All right, well, let's come up here. You know, if I had paid attention when I was come when I was landing the first time, I could have just parked the aircraft over there in the hangar. That would have been cool. All right, so we are here um, at our Cessna. Um, it's all tied down and stuff. So we need to go ahead and start doing our walk around and pre-flight. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I was going to shut the door, but uh, that wouldn't make any sense since we need to uh, get out and do our walk around. So, let's go ahead and pull up, pull up our, do our walk around first. All right, our operating handbook. Do we have our operating handbook? Uh, I know, I got candy, so check. Parking brake. I like how it says parking brake, but yet you can't. You notice you can't. I can't move. I can't. I can't move this any. So I can't check. I can't look at it. But yes, it is set. 
avionics uh, power switch yes it's clicking why is it clicking I have no idea um, it should be off ignition switch why is that on both I shouldn't be on both okay well it's off um, master switch on Fuel quantity, okay, good. Flaps, full down. Master switch, off. Check the lights. We'll do a toggle lights here. And now we'll go to lights. Check, next. Yep, that's working, that's working. I don't see anything. That's working. All right. Looks good. And we'll go to back to pre-flight again. Now it's time to check off our, let's see, fuel on off valve should be on. This is the fuel shut off. I'm guessing this is what it's talking. Do we ever use this? Do you guys know? Do we ever use this in the simulator or is it just here just to click on? Is there a purpose for this being here? I know there's a purpose in real life. I'm not disputing that. I'm sure there's a reason for that. I'm just saying, as far as the simulator, is there any reason in the simulator that you'd want to use this? Or is it just kind of there just to like, oh, this is cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. Let, let me know. I'm, I'm just curious. I'm, I'm wondering if <laughs> if there's any, any, any need for us to use this. Um... Fuel selector valve, uh, well, that's down here. Can't even see it. Um, static pressure alternative source valve is here. It's off. This is another one, too. Like, wh what do we use this for? And do we need to use it at all? It's obviously got a purpose, but is does it is it needed in the, in the simulator? So this is, that's the thing. I mean, if they're going to have this stuff in here... Do something with it you know i mean there should be a reason for it to be in here there should be a situation that would happen to where you're like oh crap i need to pull i need to open up my alt static air or oh i need to shut off the fuel for whatever reason you know there should be there should be some type of situational hazards or something that happens in the plane where you have to go through emergency procedures or something like that instead of just kind of like oh I'll just go flick this switch over here anyway that's, that's that's just my thing that's just my thing I mean there's buttons and gadgets and I, I think it's great that they work but I want a little bit more interactivity I want I want a reason for them being there um, alright trim controls neutral yeah we definitely need to switch that to Neutral. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. I can really. I know this is the radio panel. I have to check this out and see what exactly that is. All right. So now we're going outside. Um, the baggage door. Now, see, this is another thing too. I think there are some planes. I think, like from Carinado or Alabeo, where you can actually open up the door and stuff. And this one you can't, and that's annoying. Now, I'm pretty sure you couldn't do that with the with the default Cessna. But I mean, come on. I mean, reality reality expansion pack. You added these other things, but you couldn't add like a I don't know, like a model door or something. You know, to like click it, and make sure that it's secure you know and and there should be those times where it's like you know it opens up and you're like oh crap it's not secure so you need to like lock it or something instead of just kind of like okay check click 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 done you know I, I want i want a little bit more interactivity you know a reason for it's like oh man i'm glad i checked that <laughs> right I, I i want you know i mean if the if the idea is for realism then there should be uh, like some unknown possibilities that come up, you know, like you're going through and your baggage door 
and maybe it's not secure. Um, uh, and maybe you have the option to load, well, there, you do have the option to load something in there just by pounds. And let's say it wasn't secure and it opened up during flight and you get a message that says you just lost your luggage or something, you, you know? Um, a little bit more so rep if you're watching this video a little bit more that that's that's what i'm asking here just push it a little bit more that would be so cool uh okay let's see uh I'll check the elevator looks good see now what if it wasn't good right right i mean are there times where this never works or barely works Check rudder. Okay. Toggle tie down. Good. And then the emergency locator antenna. Check for integrity. So how do you check this for integrity? You just look at it. Mm, okay, looks good. You know, I'm a little bit more interactivity with that one. Uh, I like how this is uh, tells you about it. All right, right wing, checking the flaps. Okay, looks like the air line seems to work there. Take that tie down off. And let's see, our fuel color seems good. Does this ever change? I have no idea. Toggle chocks, take those off. Engine oil, color, check. All right, propeller and spinner, check for security and oil leaks. So you, oh, wait, 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 what's this, what's this, what's this? What, what does this do? That doesn't do anything. I'm clicking something, but it don't do nothing. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I have a feeling I'm clicking something on the instrument panel. And I don't know. That's interesting. So, yeah. So, you know, ch check for oil leaks. Okay. So what if there is an oil leak? Is there ever an oil leak? That's my question. Or do we just kind of flip through these screens like, oh, yeah, yeah, good. Uh, toggle, 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 toggle. Okay, we're good. All right, take the toggle off. And current tire status is good. And fuel quantity, good. Toggle the pitot, pitot, pilot, tube, tube cover off. Toggle tie down. And we'll check this left wing airlon. And the flap. It says keep pressed, but doesn't seem to do anything unless I click it. And then we do the chocks on this one. Boy, you know our front, our front one, our front wheel seems, front tire seems to be in good shape. Uh, these back here, boy, they're they're getting used quite a bit. All right, I think we are super. All right. We are inside. Let's go ahead and go through our checklist here. Okay, so seat belt, shoulder harness, yep, click, we're good. Brakes, test.
Well, we don't need to test it because if I hit my brake, it's going to undo the parking brake. I already know that. So we'll just click on it. Yay. <laughs> See, and there's our, there's our fuel thing. Um, whoa. Uh, let's see, fuel shutoff valve on or in. So there it is. Fuel shutoff is in. Should that be on? I wonder. If 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 you want to shut off, I don't know. That just seems weird that it would fuel shutoff valve on in. Well, it's in. That's what's what it's supposed to be. So when do you pull it off? I guess when you want to shut off the fuel, but why would you want to do that? To prevent a fire? And for that matter, would it ever happen inside of a um, simulated Cessna? It should. Um, okay. Circuit breakers. So, so yeah. So here are the circuit breakers. Uh, we can click on them and they do absolutely nothing. Uh, it would be nice if there was uh, something that would tell us like, hey, you need to change the uh, circuit breaker for such and such. Oh, okay. You know, and you go ahead and change it and stuff. It gives more purpose to these, uh, to these checklists, I think. Am I, am I just speaking crazy or, I mean... If you want to add some realism to it, I mean, you know, add some realism to it. Okay, so... Beacon on. Which I don't think is going to do anything until... Until we have power. Avionic switch off. Master switch on. Okay. And... Throttle... Open one fourth of an inch. I think that's right around there. Mixture idle cutoff. I think this is. This is this is where it's cut off for the mixture. I know when I pull it all the way out, it cuts off. I'm not a pilot in real life. Could you? Can you tell? Uh, <laughs> engine cold. Auxiliary pump on. Mixture rich until three to five GPH, then cut off. Um, oh, okay. So that is. Well, that's gallons per hour. Uh, GP at GPH gallons per hour. Oh no, okay, gallons per hour. So we need to turn on the fuel pump until three to five. Guess we're waiting for this thing to move up. La 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 la. Do we need to change? No, I think the throttle's fine. It says auxiliary pump. I'm assuming they mean fuel pump. There's no other type of pump on here. Okay, well, I guess that's enough because it's 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 not moving. Propeller area clear. Yes, it's clear. Let's go ahead and start. Hopefully we can get this thing to start. Okay, well, 
<laughs> oh, I need to. That's right. I need to push that in all the way because of the next page. Ignition switch start. Make sure at engine. Oh, at engine start should be rich. Okay. Well, it's not going to. If I have it all the way out, it's not going to start. Okay, avoid high RPMs, blah, blah, blah. Well, I wasn't trying to do hard. I, okay, I guess maybe I just had this open too much. But Oh, it started, but this is, yeah, this is... Man, I did better on this than I have on some of the other ones. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my ta taxi lights. Nav, strobe. Well, that's landing lights. There it is. Turn on our avionics. Flaps. And now it's time to set our instruments. So we will go ahead and do that right now. Go ahead and set our nope. Now we're on municipal, that's where we are going. Uh, let's see, enter. I think we are set, probably when we get out in the air. Okay, let's see, instruments. So one other thing we're going to do here, is we're going to set our radios here, but let's pull up our uh, Commodore 64 map since we are matching what we're doing on that ancient uh, simulator. Here it is. We are here at DuPage, and we are going here to Aurora Municipal. So we're going to set this uh, DuPage uh, VOR 108.4 to a, oh, let's see, 2322, I would say roughly... 2-2. Two, two. That should probably do it. 2-2-5. Two, 2-2-5. Two, five. Two, two, five. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Four. Aha! I wasn't paying attention to 108.4. Okay. I forgot the frequency for the radio. <laughs> 108.4. There. Uh, what were you we saying? It was uh, 22.5. So, right about there. Ok, 
Okay. I'm going to move this off the screen here. All right, so something else we need to do is check our altimeter. I'm going to do that on my phone. Let's see here. We've got... Well, when I can pull it up here. Airnav.com Airports and KDPA Okay, so elevation is 758.6 If you can see that there it's probably all blurry. Ooh, almost. Oh, there. See it? Elevation, 758. And that doesn't look like where the altimeter is sitting at. <laughs> 758. Oh, 700. Oh, okay, no. We've got 700. About roughly about half there so right around there that should be right huh 758 okay so we are good there we'll set that well I think as far as radios we've got everything set there now it's just a matter of just getting our comms going Alrighty, I think I've got things working, so let's go ahead and you know, pull up our nifty little PFE uh, cheat thing here, which gives us uh, our little keys for check-in and acknowledge, say again, all this nice little stuff here. Um, but we've got to tune into ATIS first, which is 124.80. Go ahead and do that right now. Airport information. Papa. Weather at one five four five zero. Wind two zero at five. Visibility greater than twenty miles. Sky condition ten thousand scattered. Temperature fourteen. Dew point zero. Altimeter two nine nine one. ILS runway 2 left in use. Landing departing runway 2 left. Via for aircraft say direction of flight. All aircraft will back hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact you have. Papa. This is DK airport information. Papa. Weather at 15450. Wind 2 0 at 5. Visibility greater than 20 miles. The condition 10,000 scattered. Temper I could hear the default ATC uh, talking in the background there. <laughs> I thought I had that turned off, but I don't know. I think I need to play around with the settings a little bit. Uh, let's see if this will work here. Radio test November 172 Sierra Papa. You please open my IFR flight plan at this time. Cessna November 172 Sierra Papa. Roger. We'll open the flight plan at 57. Never had that happen. Cessna November <laughs> 172 Sierra Papa. Roger. Thank you. I have never, I have never had that happen before. That is cool. <laughs> Usually that never happens. Where it's like, oh, can you open up my flight plan? Usually he's checking in with center. That was, oh, I must have, okay. Because I'm, I'm given a different, uh, okay, that, that's just, that was cool. Um, now what? <laughs> 
All right, so I opened up my flight plan. Now what? Uh, let's see. Oh man, I love this little cheat sheet thing here. Where can I put it? Is it e easier to read? Somewhere? I don't know. Toggle flight plan, VFR, IFR request field, advisories, amend flight plan, report position, VCP mode. I don't know what that is. Um, uh, I guess we're going to ground 121.80. Let's go ahead and do that. 121.80. We were already there. Oh no, we were kind of close to it. Ground test November 172 Sierra Papa and parking number 2A2 Kilo Alpha Romeo Romeo with information. Juliet ready to taxi. Test November 172 Sierra Papa contact Claire's delivery on 119.7 by. 119.75 November 172 Sierra Papa. Oops. I didn't go to clearance delivery. That's what I wind up going to first all the time. Clearance, clearance test delivery. November 172 Sierra Papa and parking number 28 IFR 2 Kilo Alpha Romeo Romeo with information. Papa. This November 172 Sierra Papa. Clear to Kilo Alpha Romeo Romeo. Runway heading. Departure maintain one thousand squall six seven six two departure one three three point five Runway heading maintain one thousand squawk six seven six two departure on one three three point five that's November one seven two Sierra Papa one two one point eight November one seven two Sierra Papa good day there's no talking on that one. Ground test November 172, Sierra Papa and parking number 28, ready to taxi. Cessna November 172, Sierra Papa, stand by. Cessna November 172, Sierra Papa, taxi runway and hold, runway to left field, Romeo 6, whiskey. Whiskey 2, Charlie 2. Romeo 6, Whiskey, Whiskey 2, Charlie 2, Runway 2, Left, November 172, Sierra Papa. Runway 172, right? Or it was runway two left is what he was ta taking. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm using the ATC with uh, world traffic, and I'm going to select two left. So now world traffic knows that I'm going to go to two left. Um, so we're going to go ahead and turn that off, and we are set to go. How am I supposed to, um, idle my, uh, Next right on taxiway. Whiskey. throttle if all it's going to do is foul my spark plugs? I mean, that's, that's a little annoying. 
know what I mean? So, I mean, I've got to bring down the throttle in order to slow it down. But if it's just going to follow up the spark plugs, because I, I keep getting that message. Or is it just warning me? No, it's telling me they're fouling because of it. We didn't turn on uh, eight. KC who? No, just checking frequency. Straight on. We gotta have our ATC okay, chat on. We're clear. Um, no, I'm sorry. I thought it was metering. Frequency meter. Uh, hang on one second. Let me uh, see if. They used to put it on our chart. I can't find it anymore. What are they doing talking about this stuff on this frequency? This doesn't sound like. They might as well talk about, hey man, what are you getting for lunch? Well, I don't know. Um, have you gotten that chocolate shake cake? <laughs> chocolate cake shake? <laughs> oh no, man, I haven't had a chance to go over there and get that. <laughs> yeah, man, it's pretty good. By the way, if you can bring over that paperwork, uh, that IFR paperwork you're supposed to find, that'd be great. Whiskey 2. Steady. Steady. Left 2. Runway 2. Left. November 172 Miera. Pop contact tower on 120.9. 1 2 0 point niner. November 172 Miera. Pop up. Good day. Tower Cessna, November 172, Sierra Hoppa, runway 2 left, ready for takeoff. Cessna, November 172, Sierra Hoppa, wind 0 by 0 at 5, runway 2 left, clear for takeoff, fly runway heading. Roger, clear for takeoff, November 172, Sierra Hoppa. Smoke 2243. The Smoke 2 Smoke Transition has filed 10,000, expect 30 and 10. 2243 on the square for Jet 327 and 6 Sherwood X-ray. Jet 327 Sherwood X-ray. Clear, never 3323. I've been trying to call you. Out of here. Lean is in. I can clear on this radio. Wow, looking for, uh... Negative PDP. <laughs> right, number 3323, clear to Oscar, Alpha, Juliet, Gary, two departure. That sounded kind of weird. Uh, I'm looking for uh, such and such. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, we are flying up. Oh, we are really low. Cessna, November 172, Sierra, Papa, contact departure on 133.5. Cessna, November 172, Sierra, Papa. Uh, Negative, uh, we, uh, November 1, we have 2, here on Papa, he's with you at 1,000, uh, I have uh, we are unable to cross the point at 259. Roger, Cessna, November 172, Sierra, Papa, radar contact, altimeter is 3023. 3 November 172, Sierra, Papa. Go ahead, 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 
Cessna, November 172, Sierra, Papa, resume on navigation. Maintain 2, 3, resume on navigation. Cessna, November 172, Sierra, Papa. We're only five minutes away. That's not bad. Guys trying to find a runway. We are single American eighteen forty two with Tango going to Charlotte. Yeah, uh, we're trying to find a runway. You know where we can land? I don't know, let me see. All right, we'll just hang right here. Cessna, November 172, Sierra, Papa. Continue present heading. Expect vectors for the ILS runway, Niner, approach. Continue present heading, November 172, Sierra, Papa. Continue present heading, November 172, May not be perfect, but November one seven two works nice, I think. Turn right heading three three five. Right two three three five. November one seven two. Here, To be honest with you, we never got our uh, previous. Uh, Out of two thousand four one thousand seven. November one seven two. Here, Hoppa. I'm sorry about that, you were stepped on me again. Uh, can you, uh, say that again? You're being assigned 611, 30, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 10,000. Man, when I can get some sharper images, this is going to look amazing, I think. Right now, I think it looks fine. You know, it's not like I'm going to sit there and stare at the ground and go, ooh. Well, we already have it. We've got a message from the Gulf Hall on our Just think, they weren't able to do stuff like this with uh, photoreal scenery and 3D buildings on top, you know, years ago, and now we've come this far. I don't know, give it another, what, 10, 20 years, I'll be in a wheelchair probably, and we might actually have it to a point where 
here. We've got photo real scenery and 3D buildings and objects exactly where they're supposed to be. And not, you know, stuff that... Not stuff where you have like a four sitting over a mall or something. So she's saying the ILS 9 approach I need to find approach chart for that. Looks like they've got me set up for it. They've got me hooked up on 108.9, that's the actual localizer. <coughs> Although this is not moving. Let's make sure they're not putting us on some type of wild goose chase here. Whoops. Ah! No! I want to go to my flight plan. I want to go to my flight plan. I want to see the map. to let me, is it? <laughs> you don't say. I can't get back to my map. <laughs> no! That's not what I want to do. Rounding us away again. They're doing weird stuff. I don't like when they do that. Because I was headed right for the airport. Uh, November 172, Sierra Papa, turn left heading 255. Left 255, November 172, Sierra Papa. I think we're at the right altitude. See, here's the, uh, and right here, 2700, should be flying at that until we get about six miles. 
at a 090 heading, and we're at 28. <clears throat> I think we're doing okay. And our electronic co-pilot has already set our OBS, our VOR radio for us, so we're good there. Yeah, listen to these conversations. These doesn't sound like something you would that you would that you should be hearing on on a on an average on a com radio. Should should you? What's that? Uh, and you see that? Is that an airport? Okay, sorry, Jack 2, Southwest uh, 13. Boy, the sound of the air condition <laughs> is loud. Your hand over the vent. Yeah. It's loud. Okay, very good. Uh, okay, very good. Cloudy day. And oh, there's an airport down there. All the autogen trees are just like. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, it doesn't fill out this stuff, but it fills it out all over here. Why? <laughs> and it throws it all onto this white, with, it's probably like a mall or something. The tree autogen doesn't seem to work very well in this area. It's like, oh, let's just throw trees everywhere.
Cessna, November 172, Sierra, Papa, turn left heading 150. Left to 150, that's November 172, Sierra, Papa. It's not too bad. There's a bit of a de uh, delay in the chatter, so the ProFlight emulator is not being stepped on as much. Out of 3,000 for 1,000 test in November 1, F2, Sierra Hoppa. Right through the door via the Palmer 2, then in file 10,000, 2,516, 3, United, 674. United, 674, we're back. Looks like we're heading back towards it. Estimated time of arrival is going down. Five minutes. Five. Five, five, five. Nice and green out here. I wonder what that's supposed to be. <laughs> What's this? Is that supposed to be like clouds from the satellite view? Is that what that is? I have no idea what that is. I guess those are supposed to be houses, yeah. I never showed you this. No, never in mind. I can't. I um, I put down like how much I weighed and like how much baggage I put in here. I guess I'll show you that when we land. I tried to pretend like, oh, okay, let me put someone in the front, the two front seats, and in the back seat, and then it told me that there was too much weight on the plane. I'm like, dang. Told me it was all off balance and everything. November 172, Sierra, Papa. Turn left heading 120. Left 120, November 172, Sierra, Papa. November 172, Sierra, Papa, cleared for the ILS. Runway Niner approach. Contact tower on 120.61 established. Out of 3,000 for 1,000. Still established on the ILS. Runway Niner, November 172, Sierra, Papa. And then we need to change this. Tower that's November 172 here at Hoppa and Niner Miles to the west end 3000 miles from Atlantic. That's November 172 here at Hoppa. Approach number 1 for landing. 
Continue approach number one for landing November 172 here at Hoppa. Okay, perfect. This whole time I had it on GPS, not nav. No wonder it looked wrong. Okay, wow, this thing is like totally not... Whoops. Yeah, see the world traffic ATC doesn't even give me the option to contact them for runway. It was just taking off. Try to straighten up a little bit here. Alright, Captain 839. It'll be uh, south 
radar section one, day 43 of signal, and then inbound, and take four down, section one, zero down, ten minutes after <laughs> launch. Uh, you're free Gotta to love how the, um... 119.8, and 117. <laughs> the idle gym put a road and houses <laughs> right there where the, uh, the auto gen or right where the ILS stuff is at it's like come on man okay Y'all said. <laughs> I don't think they talk like that in Chicago. <laughs> Y'all said. <laughs> Clearance, Southwest 1017. Southwest 1017. Didn't get a CPGLC, we've got Zulu. Uh, let me try to find it now. Ground test November 172 here at Hoppa. Clear of the active runway. Uh, I'm clear of a runway. November 172 here at Hoppa. Hold position. Oh, okay. Hold, hold position. Why? There's no one here. <laughs> November 172 Sierra Hoppa. Stand by. Looks like it went through the CPGLC. November 172, Sierra, Hopper, standby. Nope, it's just you, but I understand. Nothing here, nothing issues at all, or the... Nope, it's just you, but I understand. November 172, Sierra, Hopper, taxi to terminal. Transition, that's that file. Block 3341. I built you, green with transition. Congratulations, you had zero deviations from the sign, airways, blah, blah, blah. All right. Uh, I guess we'll. I don't know. Is there a terminal in here? I don't know. I don't. I don't see anything. We'll just kind of move mosey on over this way. I don't even see any traffic. Where's my general aviation world traffic? Clearance, good afternoon. Consider 2709. Bridge copy clearance with information. Papa on gate 14. I wonder if I can get back there into that, uh... Into that maintenance bay. E! <laughs> It's like, oh, shut up about the stupid freaking spark plugs. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> they don't talk like this on VATSIM. VATSIM is not accurate, man. Jack 2, Kellen has called T047 for the box. Special 6 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 
Let's pull out a checklist. Let's do. Uh, let's see. References. No. Before takeoff. Well, we didn't really look at that, did we? <laughs> I'm still practicing. Uh, takeoff. Lights on. Well, I guess we did that a little too early. Before landing. Well, we didn't quite really do that either, did we? Um, after landing, check. Okay, lights. Off, except for beacon. Off. I wonder why you would not turn off the beacon. I mean, if you're going to turn everything off, I don't know. Flaps. Flaps should be up. That's interesting. Alright, that's all we have. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. But yet, when you start it up, they should be down. Okay. Alright, well, we have them up then. Trim. Neutral. Well, let's do that. Done. Throttle. Throttle is idle. Mags. Ground. Check. Well, we're at 1,000 RPM. Avionics equipment. We can turn that off. That means that can be turned off. <laughs> That should be... Oh, okay. I think that actually worked. Oh, yes. Okay, good. I didn't see what was working before. There's a checkbox. Here, I'll show you. There's a checkbox here for radio power. So if you have this on, then when you go to turn on your radios... Uh, yes, sir. We had a maintenance return. See? Isn't that cool? Of course, now it disappeared. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, now I can't see it. Where did it go? I don't know. Well, it disappeared now. Alright. Well, it's somewhere. <laughs> it's behind here somewhere. Um... Hobbs and Tack securing. Wait a minute here. Engine shut down. All right. Throttle, avionics, electrical equipment. Okay, so that's turned off. Mixture cut off. This is the mix. Well, cut off is. Ooh, maybe we should do the fuel shut off. Ooh, that's interesting. That makes an interesting sound. What's this do? Who knows? Alright, so that's done. Master switch off. Ignition switch off. Ignition key. Glare shield. This. Glare shield. I have no idea what this this does. Um, securing aircraft, Hobbs and Tack control lock, vertical blah 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 blah. All right, we need to do our our walk around. Uh, post flight. All right, toggle pit it tube cover. Toggle tie down. Toggle tie down. Toggle chocks. Tires still looking pretty good. Put our covers down. And our toggle. And oh my goodness, something's weird's going on over there. 
and shocks there and we're good all right so here is the baggage i was telling you about so i put in my weight in kilograms um, i had to look up a conversion utility for that um, and then i started putting in uh like weights for um like some other people let's say you know i put someone in there by that amount and that's not too bad but it starts throwing throwing things off and then if i start putting i don't know maybe someone back here but you see what it does take off and landing weight and balance are out of limits um yeah it it, it throws it all off so what i can't have many people in the plane See that? I don't know. That's just kind of weird. I'm assuming this is accurate. And then there's like baggage. 50. And kind of throws it off in that direction. Doesn't seem like you can put much inside the Cessna without throwing it off of... <laughs> thro thro throwing it off balance. Either that or I just weigh too much. I don't weigh that much. I didn't think I weighed that much. Huh. Change you oh, change units. Oh, we got pounds now. Oh, okay, cool. So that's about right. Baggage. I don't know. Fifty one pounds for a baggage is probably not is probably too heavy. I don't know. Let's say twenty pounds. That may still be too heavy. I don't know. So see this is still in the in the right area. I guess. So empty weight, payload weight, fuel weight, takeoff weight. So, I don't know. So I was just kind of playing around with this just to kind of get an idea of what it would be like. So, like, if I was to put my, my wife and daughter in here, it's, it's like this thing would be, like, You know, instantly we'd be we'd be we'd be barely whoops. Barely sitting in here right. Well that almost works. No baggages. Oh. Maybe we can, oh, no. See now? See? So, I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't even know if I'm doing it right. I guess you just fill in the stuff, but... but do, do you have to be, like, light as a feather to sit inside of a Cessna? I wonder. I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> uh, that's it. So, we're, we're here in the Bay. We're here in uh, Aurora uh, Municipal Airport. So, hey... Let's go into town and uh, let's go find something special. So here we are at our first stop here in uh, Aurora, or basically Sugar Grove. This is the uh, area of uh, Illinois. And right over here is a place called Blackberry Farm. 
and we're gonna go ahead and go inside and check it out okay so we're inside and that would be the website <laughs> so it is listed under the Fox Valley uh, Park District where the fun begins and Okay, well, Aurora, Illinois. There's also um, an area called uh, Sugar Grove, Illinois. So if you'd like to take a look at the map here, you will see here's the airport. And yeah, see there's Sugar Grove, right? Okay, so Sugar Grove is right here next to Aurora. That's where we landed. And Aurora is right here. So yeah, yeah it's kind of an area, but... Anyway, um, so this is a living history museum where pioneer life is recreated through educational demonstrations and hands-on fun. Admission to the Blackberry Farm includes unlimited rides on the train, a hay wagon, pedal tractors, paddle boats, carousel, and ponies. This, uh, they got some uh, Facebook stuff here, wedding and events. Uh, regular uh, seasons hour upcoming events and a little thing here that you can uh, play enable audio well yes So you got a nice little uh, virtual tour here. There's a gift shop. And yeah, you can go ahead and click on this stuff here. Oh, full screen. Let's do that. Oh, let's spin around. Whee! <laughs> Alright, so here's the gift shop. Oh my goodness. Whoa! Okay, so um, don't drink too many uh, blackberries, I guess. Careful of that. So you got some jam and stuff, apparently. And... Whoa! Let's go to the courtyard. Yeah. So, this is kind of neat over here. So we get a little carpentry. This is like just kind of like being in the uh, like Old West. Let's click on the wagon. the schoolhouse. Wagon works.
carousel. Learn how to control my spinning. I've learned how to control my drinking of blackberries. train station and there's a boathouse It's always cool to go through a tunnel. Now the train station's over there. Too quick here. There's the picnic area and the performance area. bridge. These are always neat too. This is kind of neat. You can kind of go in here and just spend a whole day in here. A birthday deck. Covered bridge and an adventure playground. Let's go check out the adventure playground. Here's the birthday deck.
This is around the barn. Go around the barn. We are going around the barn. Party room. Well, they have like a room and a deck and everything. <laughs> the event plaza. This is a big place. Wow, six bucks for kids under two, seven bucks for children. Um, Holiday Express, what about adults? Oh, ages two years? Oh, two and up, nine. Wow! For all that? And that's only nine bucks? Oh, for residents, six bucks. Non-residents, nine? Oh, well, yeah, that's totally worth it. I mean, it's inexpensive, and it looks like there's a lot of things to do. Wow. Well, that that is... All right, that's fantastic. All right. Yeah, so, all right, so, yeah, come come to this website and, and check this stuff out. All right, well, let's let's go to our next stop in Aurora. We're actually going to be driving over to Sugar Grove this time. And here we are, our second stop here in Aurora. Although this is Sugar Grove, or just south of it. And, well, <laughs> yeah, there it is. So Sugar Grove, family, fun, uh, something. Family, fun, park. But, uh, we got some go-karts here and some water rides and we're gonna go inside and here we are we are inside the Sugar Grove go-kart track in Chicago area this is the uh, Sugar Grove Family Fun Center and you can go in here whether you're a kid or an adult you can uh, give them a call if you've got questions And let's take a look at. Welcome to the Sugar Grove Fun Center, located on Route. That looks like a toy track right Sugar there. Sugar Grove, Illinois, located minutes away from I-88. The Fun Center has activities for all ages. Ask about our packages for birthdays and special events. And how nice they're opening the door for us. That's cool. Come on in and get the kids out of the sun for hours of entertainment in our ticket arcade. Don't forget to cash in your tickets for some of our fabulous prizes. The first of two fun-filled go-kart tracks is the Quarter Mile Sugar Grove Speedway. It can hold up to 16 go-karts and offers two seat carts to let the younger kids get a ride. The Wrangler Slick Track is Illinois' first slick road course. With a smooth concrete surface, it's designed to let you drift through each corner. Race nights are hosted on Wednesday nights at 6.30 p.m. and run through mid-August. If you're looking to cool down, come check out the bumper boats and see how many people you can get wet with your very own water cannon. Test your putting skills on the 18-hole Santa Fe Trails mini golf course and enjoy the views while you weave in and out of waterfalls, streams, and... Oh, that is a very blue water thing, isn't it? 
looking for more excitement? Try out your water balloon slingshot skills in a Water Wars battle. Hit the target and you're guaranteed to soak your family and friends with the depth charge. And don't forget, we provide the finest outdoor golf range in the area. And we also offer the best private golf instruction and golf clinics in Chicagoland. Golf lessons are available seven days a week and until 11 p.m. by appointment. We look forward to seeing you at the Sugar Grove Fun Center. Visit our website at... Very cool. What's this one about? Oh, it's just the, the go-karts. All right, we'll pretend that we're on the go-kart. Yeah! This is great fun, yeah! All right. <laughs> that thing is like bu 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 That's a plane on turbulence. All right. Cool. Uh, Go-kart rides, 55 bucks. Uh, we read about that. The Wrangler Adult Slick Track Speed Ray, or Speedway. Uh, well, 10, yeah, ten, I was going to say that's kind of expensive, but you do get 10 rides. Do you have to buy 10 rides, I wonder? Or maybe you can split that up. I mean, you buy 10 rides and you can probably sp split that up with uh, whoever you're going with. But that's why if you have questions, you can give them a call. And you can call them right now. Uh, so let's see. Mini golf. Oh, no, this is more my price. <laughs> Don't lose your ball. You may not find it. Uh, eight bucks. Santa Fe course. Goofy golf course. Mini golf. Take a trip back to the 1950s with our vintage putt putt golf course. Thought it was two T's, putt putt. Anyway, um, one tough mini course, mini golf and go-kart race. Oh, so you get one of each for only 30. Okay, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, that's cool. That's what I'm talking about right there. After a round of mini golf, try the bumper boats. So, ooh, see, now this, 17 bucks for one person. You get a round of mini golf, a go-kart race, a bumper boat ride, and a water wars. There we go. There we go. Uh, okay, we got the driving range, golf center. Yeah, I'm not interested in that. Water fun. Here's the water fun. Bumper boats. You will get soaked. You will get bumped. And you will love it. Or else. This is kind of neat. <laughs> Shooting water cannons at, at, at people. This is cool. And food. You got the Fantastico Grill. You got tacos and tostadas and burritos and all that other stuff. But this is not where we're going to be going for food. No. We are going to be going somewhere else. And it's not too far away. And I think they might be saying goodbye to us. Or maybe they're happy that we're leaving. I don't know. But let's go there now. All right. Here we are, the Fireside Grill, lunch, dinner, and banquets. We got specials, the barbecue ribs, and Wednesday prime rib. So, yeah, I was uh, kind of looking around for a good place to eat, and this is what I found. Over here, and this is not too far from the airport either. Um, it's right over here. This is the... Fireside Grill in the airport. That's all we need to do is just hop on the, um, oh, what is that? The, the 56 right here. Take that over there, and the airport is just right off in this direction. So we're not too far. All right, so let's go on inside. All right, here we are inside the Fireside Grill. Welcome. 
where an American tradition grilled to perfection with prime rib, pork chops, baby back ribs, and more. All right. So we're going to savor the good stuff from Sugar Grove. There's a map in case you're wondering where. All right. So there, there, see, there it is, the airport, just like I said. So it's right down here. In case you're wondering uh, where the Blackberry was, uh, we were going down here on the 30. And we got off here at Galena. And it's off in this direction. So we go, go off here and it's over here. And the Sugar Grove Fun Park is right down here. <coughs> so here we are. We're right here at the uh, Fireside Grill. Let's go ahead and uh, find out what we're going to order. Well, that looks fantastic right there. All right. Well, I don't drink, so we're not going to have beer. Banquets. I have to check that banquet menu. All right. House favorites. French onion meatloaf. Oh, now that sounds good right there. French onion meatloaf. I love meatloaf, as long as it's good. Tilapia, roasted, roasted, roasted pork chop, fish and chips, top sirloin, barbecue baby back ribs, sandwiches, barbecue roasted pork chop sandwich. That sounds kind of interesting. Southwest roasted pork, oh, Southwest, and then a barbecue roasted pork. American Broasted. So this has got barbecue sauce, and this has got American cheese, and this has got pepper jack and uh, guacamole. There we go. Some wraps for some healthy, healthy stuff, and uh, some salads for even more healthy stuff, and then pastas for like some unhealthy stuff. <laughs> uh, Diablo. That looks kind of good. Fireside Burgers, the Fireside Belt Buster, well, I'd say for that price there. Um, then Cuisine, and oh, I, I, I don't know, I, you know, this is, oh, the lunch menu. Maybe we should go to the dinner, dinner menu. Um, appetizers, because uh, it's getting, getting close to the evening. All right, so Fireside, that's Kind of a bum deal because I kind of want that. Oh, come on. Do they have it? Don't tell me you have. Tell me you have. Oh, stuff you catch. House favorites. Yes, stay. Oh, it's more. <laughs> That's okay. I'm having it. <laughs> We're having the French onion meatloaf. That's it. We're having that. What is this other stuff they got though? Buffalo chicken sandwich, grilled chicken sandwich, turkey bacon club, veggie sandwich, black and tea. It all looks good. The, the pig out menu. It's pork, pork stuff. All right. And uh, there's happy hour. Not, not really interested in that. Um, banquet menu. Well, if you want a banquet. Oh, okay. That, that looks like catering. All right, well, um, what are we getting? We're getting uh, the, uh, oh, here we go, Fireside Nachos. All right, we got to get our appetizer of Fireside. What's some of this stuff, though? Loaded fries, fried calamari, Fireside. Now nah, getting Fireside Nachos with uh, steak, yes. And a French onion meatloaf and ooh, dessert. Got a dessert. Um, carrot cake. Chocolate eruption. I don't know what that is, but that sounds good. I'm going to go with the cho chocolate eruption. Sides. Sweet potato fries. Forget that. And beverages. How about pomegranate flavored lemonade? There we go. I'm all set. I don't know about you, but <laughs> I'm uh, 
I think I'm all set and I'm, uh, I'm good to go here. And just to bring myself back up here, I um, want to thank you for joining me on the, this, uh, int uh, this interesting flight and this little uh, tour inside Aurora, Illinois, and Sugar Grove for that matter. And hope you'll join me on the next flight uh, through Illinois. Um, remember to check out the other flights that I've done in the other flight simulators. And uh, be safe in the skies, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this flight, then you might enjoy watching it on one of these older simulators too. We're following the same flight plan just so we can relive the fun memories of old. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of future flight simulation videos, and thanks very much for watching.